I'm a follower of Jesus. It's the most important thing in my life. The most healing, healthy thing for the human brain is a belief in God and prayer. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Lloyd, and welcome to the Spiritual Laws of Nature. Uh, let me share with you something that uh, happened to me this last week. It's pretty normal for me. I'm, I'm, I mess up more than anybody I've ever known. A few days ago, it was Mother's Day, and so I went out to a special bakery to get Hope's favorite cookies. And I got them, and I was so excited. They were beautiful, and she was going to love them. And I got home, couldn't wait to see the expression on her face. And I was not paying attention where I was walking, and walking really fast. And I stepped on a concrete ledge. Half my foot was on the ledge, half of it wasn't. And I went straight down. Cookies in one hand, cell phone in the other. Bam! And here's what it did. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to show you how fat I am, although I am kind of fat right now, but uh, right there, and yesterday and the day before, it looked a lot more pronounced, had a lot of purple in it and stuff like that, but I uh, went right down, broke a rib, the same rib I broke uh, about eight months ago, so, um, uh, and, and, and what's the point? The point is, Sometimes we're not paying attention and we miss something really, really important. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Okay, so you, you've got to be paying attention to the important stuff in your life or you're going you're gonna to end up with bruises and, and career problems and health problems and everything else. All right? And one area where I feel like we have missed paying attention more than any other area is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Okay? In fact, in fact, I've thought about this. I think I could almost make this broad statement. Probably not 100%, but probably 99. No matter what you think your problem is, I can virtually guarantee you that's not your problem. And without ever even speaking to you, I can guess or predict what your problem really is. Pretty bold statement. Let me try to explain it now. Very first day in uh, psychology class, Counseling 101, Psychology 101, the professor writes on the board, Let me start here. The professor writes on the board, the problem is never the problem. Now what was he talking about? All right, He was talking about when someone comes into your counseling office and, say, and, and I say, great to meet you, uh, what can I do for you? Why are you here? That what the client, what the the person says next as to why they're there, what their problem is, is virtually never the problem. Isn't that amazing? But I found it to be very true. What are they going to say? The problem is money. The problem is weight. The problem is a health thing. The problem is uh, my job. The problem is my kids. The problem... <clears throat> no. Those are never the problem. Now, are those a problem? Yes, but not the source problem. They never are, okay? The source problem is always one thing and one thing only, relationships. So I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, so I don't care if it's cancer or heart disease or um, money or work. I, I don't care what it is. If you follow that problem back to the root, the source, the source almost 100% of the time is going to be an unresolved negative relationship memory or relationship in your life. 
Okay? You have a thing in your brain that is constantly scanning like a smartphone for either a love-based signal or a fear-based signal. By fear-based signal, I basically mean anything negative. Sadness, unforgiveness, irritation, frustration, hopelessness, helplessness, rejection, low self-worth, unforgiveness. Anything really that's negative has the root of fear. Okay? And then those things developed as it kept growing and finally it got out in your life where it's a problem, but the root is fear. On the other side, love is basically anything positive. Joy, happiness, peace, uh, uh, acceptance, significance, security, forgiveness, uh, gratitude, thankfulness. All of those things come from a source root of love. And so the, hype, the, the brain, the hypothalamus in the brain is constantly scanning for either a love-based signal or a fear-based signal. It's doing that for two reasons. Number one, the number one job of your unconscious is to keep you physically alive. So it's always searching and never stops in case uh, something happens that may kill you. Like uh, you're walking and don't see a rattlesnake or you're about to walk over a ledge and fall 40 feet, or the 18-wheeler is about to pull over on you, okay? And if that happens, it bypasses your conscious mind and takes control of your body and causes you to pull the car over to safety before you have time to think, pull the car over. And you're like, oh, oh, wow. And, 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 and you're, you're scared, your heart's beating, that I could have died right there. But how did I get over here? I, 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 wow, I pulled over before I really even knew what was happening. Automatically, okay? It's actually uh, about, uh, it's hundreds of thousands of miles a second that that information travels, all right? If you're not in a life or death situation, then the second reason for the constant scanning is to see if you will consciously choose love or fear. If you choose fear, then the brain pulls the failure switch. And you have negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative chemicals, negative hormones, negative energy signals, negative actions and behaviors and beliefs. Eventually, you're going to get sick, etc. If you choose, in a non-life-threatening situation, the love choice path, then your brain pulls the success switch, positive thoughts, feelings, chemicals, hormones. You have loads of energy. Your immune system comes up to heal everything. Uh, you feel 20 again, etc. All right? Why? Because we are built to work correctly only one way in love. When we are choosing and committing our life to love in the present moment. There is no love outside the context of relationship. It doesn't exist. So you have to have another choice, and the other choice is fear. If there was only love and we didn't have any negative choice, well, that's not love. That was mandated. You didn't have any other choice. So for love to exist, which is... What this life is about is the way our bodies and minds are built to work correctly. If, if, if we're not choosing love, we start to malfunction and break down. And more and more things break, the longer we're not committed to love and we're committed to the negative, to fear, etc. Okay? So the brain is constantly scanning for that. And when it picks up that either memory with something negative in it relationally or something negative in our actual relationships and we choose the negative in response to that instead of the positive or love, then it pulls the failure instead of the success. Choose love, pulls success. Okay? So, what have you been thinking are the biggest problems in your life, okay? And let me just tell you, if it's anything other than relationships, 
They are a problem, but they are not the source. They are not the problem. And if you don't fix the problem, then you're going to be putting out those fires or not even being able to put them out, meaning they're, they will continue to be problems the rest of your life because you haven't fixed the source. Okay? So here's what I would recommend. Two things. Okay? One, I would um, uh, go someplace where you can be quiet, private, have some time. Then I'd say a prayer. Uh, Father, please help me find and heal all of my relationship issues now. And then close your eyes and uh, have three categories. Relationship issues with others, relationship issues with myself, relationship issues with God. Close your eyes, let one of those float up. When it does, write it down just enough to remind you what it was and maybe a 0 to 10 rating, how much it bothers you. Then close your eyes again, let another one come up, write it down. Do that until you feel like you really have gotten all of the relationship issues you know about in your entire life, where there's a negative in that memory with some other person, including, no, some person, including yourself. Sometimes the worst ones or yourself. Then I would pray over those pages. I would do the miracle meditation on those pages and, and you can do it one issue at a time individually or you can work on a number of them at the same time. I would also go get some of my tools that I've been developing for 20 years. Uh, Trilogy, Memory Engineering, Rapid Eye Stress Release, uh, often those can heal those things in minutes or days rather than months or years, okay? But the miracle meditation is a great thing to use. And, uh, and then there's a, second, there's a second way to do it besides just letting those issues flow up. Let's say you're in rush hour traffic and you experience anger <clears throat> and you think it's because of the traffic. It's not because of the traffic. Traffic's not the problem, all right? Because other people are in the same traffic and they're not angry, okay? So here's how you use that to find the relationship issue. Okay, what's your biggest negative that you're feeling in the traffic? And let's say it's anger. Then say a little prayer and think back, okay, when is the biggest or earliest relationship situation where I felt anger. Write it down, zero to ten, and work on that memory, not the traffic. Okay? Because the traffic is a symptom problem. The anger in the relationship is a source problem. So when that one is no longer bothering you, then say, okay, what other relationship have I experienced anger? And then another one, and then another one, and then another one. And then when you've gotten them all, say, okay, is there any other negative emotion besides anger I feel when I'm in... Oh, I feel uh, a little bit uh, afraid. I feel afraid I'm going to be late somewhere. Okay, all right, fear. Fear. Or afraid something bad's going to happen. Find the relationship where you felt that and work on that. Once you have healed all of the relationship issues that you know of, and when you heal those, your unconscious also applies that to the ones you don't know of in your unconscious. When your relationship issues are healed, your life will do a 180 or 170 or 60 or, or something like that, but it will be dramatic. If everything in your life was great except your relationships, your life would be terrible, miserable. I, and I've worked with a bunch of those people. If your relationships were great, but everything else in your life was not good, your life would still be okay. Because relationships are what give us meaning, purpose, uh, it's all about love versus fear. Love doesn't exist outside of relationships. So. Love and relationships. And, and, and for you as a believer, man, this should resonate all over the place. John said, you will know that they are followers of Jesus by their love. Most of my life, 
We were known, we weren't known for love. They didn't know us that way. They knew us for being harsh and mean and uh, uh, controlling and exclusive and all, all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, Jesus asked, is there a greatest commandment? A lot of times he didn't answer those questions. He not only answered, he went further than they asked. Yes! And the second one is like it. Both of them are love. And then the third thing he said, if you do that, if you love, truly love, you've done the whole law. You've done everything. Okay? God is love. Okay, we're not. We, we do love sometimes. Sometimes we don't. God is love. And in the beginning, God said, I am lonely. I'll make me a man. And for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. <clears throat> it's all about love, folks. And love means it's all about relationships. So this week, change your thinking and programming to prioritizing relationships, number one, above everything else, and healing the relationship issues that are causing your anger, possibly a health problem, possibly a career problem, whatever it is. And once those relationship issues are healed and your active current relationships are as good as they can be from your perspective, you can't control other people, but you can make sure they're the way they should be from your side, everything in your life is going to go up and up and up and up. All right? But we do have an opposing force inside to seek pleasure and avoid pain that is about putting relationships over here and pleasure and pain, uh, getting pleasure and relieving or not having pain for me as the number one priority, which is not relationships, spikes your stress, and actually is detrimental and destroys relationships over time. Okay? So um, change this and it can change everything, and it can do it quickly. So start prioritizing your relationships and find the source of your problems, fix it, and watch your problems melt away like uh, snow on a warm, sunny day. Thank you so very much. Have a wonderful, blessed day.